Hey Eagle fans, it's Eagle fan Carl. This is going to be my preview prediction video for Sunday night's game against the Dallas Cowboys. Before we get started, I really want to talk about something that really sort of caught my eye as it relates to uh, this game. And that's because I'm thinking about last year. We played the Cowboys on Sunday night in Dallas. Uh, it was a little bit earlier in the season. It was like the end of October, but we still played them and lost in a heartbreaking game. Uh, and one of the one of the re main reasons we lost that game was that was when we really started to see the struggles of Nelson Aguilar. He already wasn't having that great of a season, but it really so started to become uh, magnified in that uh, Dallas game on Sunday night. Uh, so I found it real interesting this week when the Eagles put out their uh, their their card for the game, so to speak, which is on the computer screen behind me that they used Nelson Aguilar for this game. I don't know if they did that consciously, but in my mind, it really shows how far we've come as a team. He is a completely different player this year, and I really think that that's a, a big reason why we're playing so well, and I think it's a real big reason as to where this team is and how it's uh, how it's looking in terms of uh, the, our prospects for not just this game, but the whole season. So kudos to the Eagles for recognizing Nelson Aguilar as having a good season this year, and hopefully he can go down there and redeem himself after the bad game he had down there last year. And for starters, let's just first of all talk about how it's great to be back with football. I think the bye week came at a good week this year, but you know, it's that, that Sunday without it just sort of seems to break things up. And I'm hoping the Eagles don't do a repeat of what happened last year where they came out real sluggish in the first half uh, coming out of the bye. Uh, we sort of saw that even in the first half of the Redskins game, which was sort of an extended bye after the Panthers game. So I'm really hoping that that sort of uh, you know sluggishness to start out and rustiness doesn't start out with this game because if that happens, it could change things a lot. I think the way this game starts is really critical uh, because if the Eagles are able to jump out on this team and get a lead early, uh, I think this team, based on what happened last week to them against the Falcons, they may start packing it in and quitting. Uh, they've got a lot of built-in excuses as to you know why things are going poorly for them in terms of some of the injuries they've got on their team right now. Uh, so I think that it, just the way that team is playing right now, that if we can get a lead on them early, that might end the thing early and we can just coast through the second half. So that said, if we come out and we're sluggish and we allow them to sort of stick around or even get a lead in the first half, uh, that could mean that we're in for a real dogfight and a long game. And that's something that, uh, based on all the statistics in this game, really shouldn't happen. It's sort of a game that we should be able to win easily. But with these division games, sometimes the, the stats and all that kind of stuff really don't mean as much because there's such a rivalry going on. Uh, and because the teams know each other so well. So the stats aren't quite as meaningful when you're playing uh, against the uh, against division opponents, but I still think there are some things that sort of uh, stuck out at me as I was looking at them. The first thing that sticks out, of course, is sort of uh, the strength of Dallas's offense has been their running game. Now, of course, they're not playing with Zeke Elliott, which obviously has a huge effect on their running game. Uh, but they still do have some guys who can run the ball, and behind their offensive line, they still should be able to move it. Uh, the real question becomes whether they're going to be able to do that against the Eagles' uh, defense. And that's because their strength really goes in line with our strength, which is our run defense. We're ranked first in the league in rush defense. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I was trying to see if I could find weaknesses on our team, because if, as you sort of take a step back and really look at this team, you know, there's a lot that's been said about how good the Eagles are playing and how well we're playing right now. But it really makes me wonder, uh, you know, just how good we are. Are there th are there weaknesses that we have that we're, are sort of getting overlooked right now because of maybe the, the way games have been playing out? Uh, and the one thing that sort of always, it's just in the back of my mind that I always wonder is if a team really stayed committed against the com committed against us with the running game, whether or not that would have an effect on how these games are playing out. I said we're first in overall rush defense, and that has to do with yards per game. If you look at rushing yards per play, we drop down to fourth. Now, we're still in the top of the league when you're talking about rushing yards per play, but I think it really does sort of uh, bring to light that whole issue that you've got in terms of if teams really stayed committed to it, would they be able to have more success? And so much of the running game lots of times is you don't always have success early with it. The success with it comes after you've sort of beaten the defensive line down so much by continuing to run at them that that's when you break off a big run. 
Uh, and that's what happened against when the one game we did lose is we gave up a big run against Kansas City. And that was sort of that idea was Kansas City did stay a little more committed to the running game than we did in that game. And I think that's one of the main reasons why they won the game. So it'll be now in a lot of these games, I think the reason teams have gotten away from the running game is twofold. Number one, we had leads, so they really couldn't run the ball because they're playing catch up. And number two, the running game wasn't doing anything. We were shutting it down. And, you know, the, the fact that, you know, running backs aren't even able to get, you know, games where they're getting 60, 70 yards rushing in a game against us, I think just goes to really underscore the fact of how well our rush defense is playing. But once again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that teams aren't trying to run against us in the second half. So, it's, so I say all that to, to say this, uh, and that's that I still have that in the back of my head that that could still be the weakness that if a team stays committed to the run, then that will then um, force us to have to play a more balanced kind of defense. And if we're doing that, it can expose that secondary because I'm st I still th our secondary, I think, is playing real well. But the secondary, I still think, is the weakness of the defense. And it's easy to play in the, in the ba defensive backfield when you know every play is going to be a pass play uh, because you don't have to worry about looking in to see if you have to get the running back on a, on a run. Uh, so you can just stay with the wide receivers. You don't have to worry about the play action fakes. Uh, you can just absolutely pay the, play the pass. And it also helps because the defensive line isn't respecting the running game either. So they're getting the quarterbacks a lot faster, which means quarterbacks have to make decisions a lot faster, which means as defensive backs, you don't have to guard uh, the wide receivers as long. So all of that put together, I think really goes to show, uh, you know, what could happen if a team really stayed committed to the run against us. So that's the one real concern I have with this team. Uh, and that's something that I think the Cowboys could try and do uh, on Sunday night is really stay committed to that running game. So all this does lead to some interesting matchups, and specifically, since Tyron Smith, it looks like he's not going to play, the matchup that becomes real critical in this game is Byron Bell going up against our, uh, what would be our right defensive end, which this year has been a rotation of Vinnie Curry and Derek Barnett. So those guys are, I'm sure, are going to be licking their chops uh, watching the film from last week and seeing how poorly the left tackle position played for the Cowboys and they went back and forth between two different guys because they had so much uh, trouble there. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if the Cowboys decide to uh, move some, um, you know, some blocking over on that side of the line to sort of help out uh, because they didn't do that last week. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't do that on pass plays. I'd also be surprised if they didn't try and use some rollouts for Dak Prescott to try and get him away from some of that, uh, from some of that, the pressure that he was uh, getting. Uh, so all that's going to be important. But I think if uh, if Vinny Curry and Derek Barnett are able to beat their guy, it could spell another long day uh, for uh, Dak Prescott. The other thing that really jumped out at me in looking at the stats is third down conversions, uh, and that's because the Eagles and Cowboys both are at the top of the league when it comes to third down conversion. The Eagles are second, the Cowboys are fourth for their offense on third down conversion. So these are teams that are getting it done on third down, which obviously is big because then it means that you can extend drives and that's what leads uh, to you know scoring possibilities. Uh, and you know, for a defense to get a three and out and get a team, right, get an offense right off the field and get their offense right back on the field is huge. So to the degree that an offense is being able to convert third downs is a big deal. And the one thing, though, that you sort of look at that, and it, so it looks like those are even, but in the terms of the defense, it's not even. And that's because the Eagles' defense is third in the league in stopping third downs, and the Cowboys' defense is 27th in the league on stopping third downs. So right there, uh, you know, you can see that it's a strength of ours and a weakness of theirs. And in the case on the other side of the ball, it's a strength of theirs going up against a strength of ours. So that's going to be an interesting thing to watch is third down conversions in this game because that's also going to be really important uh, in terms of ending drives and being able to get the ball back. And if we're able to continue to extend drives like we've been able to do and how well uh, we've been able to play on third down this year, uh, if we're able to continue to do that, it's going to mean that those drives are going to get extended. And if that's happening, you know, I don't really see how we end up losing this game if on the flip side we're able to stop them on third down.
So when you're talking about third down, then of course, you're also talking about the pass rush, which leads to another real interesting matchup in this game. And that's their defensive end, Demarcus Lawrence, up against Lane Johnson. That's the side of the line that he usually plays on. Uh, so Lane Johnson will be the guy that will be responsible for him. Demarcus Lawrence right now leads the league in sacks at 11 and a half. Uh, so he's having a really good year. That's going to be a, a real crucial matchup. We've really got to make sure that uh, Lane Johnson, who's really playing well this year, if he's able to stop him, I think that, once again, is really going to help us with those third down conversions, and it's going to really allow uh, us to continue those drives. And I think, really, if, if that happens and we're able to do that, once again, I don't see how the Eagles lose this game. Finally, the other interesting thing is going to be to watch in terms of matchups is what the Eagles do with Des Bryant. Uh, Ronald Darby is coming back this, this week, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where they play Darby, if they're going to play Darby on uh, Des Bryant, or if they're going to leave that uh, as an assignment to Jalen Mills. I know Jalen Mills really likes those kind of uh, assignments in terms of going up against the best guy. And at this point in his career, uh, I think that's probably not a bad matchup. I think Jalen Mills going up against Des Bryant, uh, who is you know a little bit older, so he doesn't quite have the speed he did when he was younger. I think that and Jalen Mills has shown that he can really play well against those kind of wide receivers. I think that could really end up being a good matchup for us as well. And it, once again, uh, it's just another matchup I think that could be in the Eagles' favor. You put all this together and it really raises the question, uh, you know, is there any way that the Eagles lose this game? And the only way I can see the Eagles losing this game is really them beating themselves. Uh, with where the Cowboys are right now, uh, they are a team that's ready to be beat if we if we play one of our best games. If we're able to play our A game, I don't think there's any way they beat us. Uh, so we've got to go in there and take care of business. If we overlook this team, uh, we could end up losing. If we play sloppy, we could end up losing. If we turn the ball over a bunch, we could end up losing. But all of those things are things we really have not done through this whole stretch of winning, of, of this winning streak that we're on. Uh, and we've done it against some teams where it would be easy to have a letdown. Games like the Chargers game, games like the uh, 49ers game, games like even the Broncos game. Those were all games where you could have had a little bit of a letdown and the Eagles didn't and were able to still get the job done. If I think if we're able to do that in this environment and in this setting, uh, I don't think there's any way we end up losing this thing. So what's my prediction for the score? Once again, I, I when I went did the preseason wins and losses, I had this one marked as a loss. But obviously a lot has changed since then. When I was doing that, I was thinking uh, Ezekiel Elliott would be back from his suspension by now, not realizing it was going to get delayed so much. Uh, and obviously I didn't know what was going to be happening with the injuries and really had no idea how well the Eagles would be playing at this point. So I really can't pick against the Eagles in this spot. It's hard enough for me to pick against the Eagles when they're playing the Cowboys anyway. Uh, but I really can't pick against the Eagles in this spot. So I'm going to go ahead, pick the Eagles to win this game. My prediction for a score is going to be Eagles 34, Cowboys 20. So those are my thoughts on the game. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave your comments below as to your prediction. Do you think... Uh, I'm crazy for thinking it's going to be this easy. Uh, are the Eagles due for a letdown and that's why they're going to lose? Or do you think they're going to blow them out by even more? Leave your comments below. I'll go ahead and check in afterwards and let you know what I thought of the game. Until then, fly goes fly.